Rules-based order means rules for thee, but not for we. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Israel is allowed to bomb an Iranian consulate, but Iran's not allowed to strike back. The U.S. is allowed to surround China with war machinery, but it would be World War III if China ever tried to militarily encircle the U.S. NATO is allowed to expand to Russia's doorstep and amass proxy forces on its border. But the last time Moscow placed a credible military threat anywhere near the United States, the U.S. responded so aggressively that the world almost ended. The rules-based international order that the U.S. centralized power structure purports to uphold just means an order in which the U.S. makes up the rules and nations had better obey them. It means rules for thee, but not for me. Democrats are currently committing genocide, pushing through terrifying NSA surveillance powers, and working to imprison a journalist for life for telling the truth about U.S. war crimes. But it's very important to support Biden because if Trump wins, fascism might come to America. The Assange extradition case is like if the mafia was demanding a snitch be extradited to Italy, and multiple nations collaborated with them to help make this happen. Except in this case, the snitch is a journalist who told the truth, and the mob happens to run a global superpower. The imperial media are once again trotting out John Bolton to help sell the idea of war with Iran. This monster belongs in a cage, not on camera. The fact that the mainstream press keep having this completely discredited, bloodthirsty psychopath on their shows to advocate every possible U.S. war proves that our entire civilization is diseased. Israel's actions over the last six months have made it abundantly clear that Biden's stated goal of preventing the outbreak of more war in the Middle East and his stated ironclad support for Israel are two mutually exclusive positions. You can do one or the other, but not both. Outside the mainstream press, the news about Ukraine is a nonstop deluge of stories about how badly things are going for them. Here are some recent articles from Antiwar.com. Ukraine's top general says situation on the battlefield has significantly worsened, discusses Ukrainians' commander-in-chief Alexander Sirsitsky's acknowledgement that Russia is making steady gains and that the front lines in Ukraine are at risk of collapsing wherever Russia focuses its offensive. U.S. general says Russia's military is bigger than before Ukraine invasion, quotes General Christopher Cavoli, saying the army is actually now larger by 15% than it was when it invaded Ukraine, an acknowledgment that Washington's stated goal of using this proxy war to weaken Russia has failed. Russia quickly restores oil refinery capability hurt by Ukrainian attacks, discusses how badly Russia is damaging Ukraine's energy infrastructure compared to the damage Ukraine has been able to deal to Russia's. Here are a couple of more from the Libertarian Institute. U.S. official admits Ukraine proxy war failing to weaken Russia features an acknowledgment from Deputy Secretary of State Kirk Campbell that Russia has reconstituted nearly all of its military losses in Ukraine. Ukraine tightens rules on military service, angering soldiers, reports on how Ukraine's legislature advanced multiple new laws that tighten rules on conscription and extend military service from those already in uniform. It is absolutely criminal how the West pushed this country into sacrificing a generation to a war they always knew was unwinnable. So much suffering and loss has been caused by the way people decided a long time ago that killing one person is murder and therefore immoral, but killing thousands of people is war and therefore fine. The actual act is the same, only the narrative and the scale are different. Around the mid-1800s, humanity began to notice it doesn't make much sense for a small group of rich people to own everything and for everyone else to have to continually give that group labor, rent, and expenses just to stay alive. And ever since then, the media, the mainstream culture, and the foreign policy of the ruling class have been intensely devoted to aggressively erasing this realization from humanity's memory.